All right, we're going to start section 4.1, which is about historical numeration systems. Um, and both 4.1 and 4.2 could almost be really combined into one section, except that that would be a massive amount of material for one section, because what they are is they're about different numeration systems. So in other words, different ways that other societies have used numerals. So believe it or not, we have not always used the numbers 0 through 9. Did you know that? That's sort of not an always thing. All right. So the first one. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is what we mean by a mathematical system. All right. So if you have your phone out now, it's time to put it away. All right, because that's not what's going on now. Mathematical system is made up of three different ideas. One is a set of elements. So that's the numerals that we use. Um, so in our system, we use what numerals? Zero through nine. So if you take a look down here on the bottom where it says Hindu Arabic system, this is our system. We use the numerals zero through nine. So how many numerals do we have? We have ten, but the number ten is not a numeral. It's actually two numerals, a zero and a one, right? Okay, so our numerals are actually zero through nine, but we have ten different numerals. Um, you have to have a way to combine the elements together. What are some ways that we combine our numerals together? Adding. You betcha. We got lots of them, don't we? We've got addition and subtraction and multiplication. Yep, multiplication and division. Those are our four basic ones. We have other ways to combine them as well, but those are our four basic operations. And then we have to have some ways of relating the elements together, some kind of a way of ordering them, okay? So how do we order or how can we compare our elements? What are some of the things we use? Hmm? No. How would I compare the numbers, say, 7 and 6? What could I say about them? Ah, so that's one way. We can talk about greater than. We could use less than. We could use equal to. We also use not equal to. These are basically our four basic ones where we could compare them in this way. Okay, these are just a few, though. There are some others. Okay, so we have a numeration system that has these kinds of, uh, descri this kind of description to it. And what we're going to do next is we're going to look at some other people's numeration systems. And as we're looking at these, we are going to talk about sort of the inherent flaws in some of their systems. Or maybe it's not even flaws, but it's sort of difficulties. That is, why aren't they still around? There are reasons for that, okay? Um, and the first system we're going to talk about is our friends, the Egyptians, right? We see them all over the Bible. You've seen Egyptian numerals. I know actually I have a necklace at home that has hieroglyphics on it that's my name. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those kinds of things before. So hieroglyphics, this idea of Egyptian numeration, yeah, that's the first one. Now, some of their symbols are really nice and clean, and others of them, not so much. So the first value that they have in their system is the value for the number one, our number one. And the symbol looks a lot like our symbol for the number one. And the description, or how we would refer to this, is they call this a staff. And if you think historically, that should make sense. Right, so you think about Moses in the Ten Commandments movie, and he has a staff that he puts over the Red Sea. Okay, so this image sort of makes sense in their culture. The next value that they have is the value for the number 10, our number 10 value. And the symbol that they use looks like this, which we've seen a symbol that looked like this before. It was our intersection symbol back in Chapter 2. Um, they would refer to this as a heel bone. Okay, so can you imagine that? Can you think about your heel? Right? This is the image that you've got going on. The next value is the value 100. And this value looks like, oh, it's not even a good time. Let's try one more time. That's better. Looks like this, and it's called a scroll. So, let me pause at this moment to say, you do not have to be an artist, I promise. I'm not an artist, I do not draw very well. It took me three times to draw the silly scroll, okay? But it should go the right direction. So don't, don't do this for me. 
Uh, sometimes I get people to do this. Um, this is not the same symbol, okay? So it, it has to remark, you know, look, look somewhat like the ones we're talking about, okay? Um, what do you think the next value is, just kind of looking at the pattern we got going on here? A thousand. A thousand. And a thousand is where things get interesting, okay? And this is where I don't draw so well. But a thousand looks something like this, and you probably see a better picture in your book, but it looks something like this. And this is called a lotus flower. <laughs> so raise your hand if you're glad you do not write in Egyptian. I am. And I'm particularly glad because if I had to write down 9,000, what do you think I might have to do? We haven't got there yet. What do you think I might have to do? Write, write down the nine times the little lotus flower. And there's so many reasons why I don't like that idea, <laughs> not the least of which is that I don't draw well. All right. What do you think the next value is? 10,000. And um, this one actually isn't so bad to draw. Again, I'm not going to draw it great. But it looks something like this, and this is actually called a pointing finger. Use your imagination. Their pointing fingers don't look quite as boxy as the one I just drew, but they look mostly like this. So I'm looking at it right now, and I'm thinking it looks almost like a gun pointing down, actually, the way I drew it. But it's supposed to be a pointing finger. What's my next value? 100,000. Yep. I do not draw this well, and this shouldn't be that hard to draw. This is a burbo fish. Um, I have used some text before that would call it a tadpole um, or that would call it a whale, just depending on the book and how they would refer to this. But it looks something like this. What's my last number? There is one more. It would be a million. You're going to love this guy. What is it? an astonished man. He's excited. I think he's excited because he's worth a million. And literally, it is the astonished man. All right, so the reality is, in their system, what they do is they, they just write repeated symbols to represent different numbers, okay? Just a repetition of symbols to represent the different numbers. Um, it's almost kind of like a tally system, except that we've got a lot of different ways of making the tally marks instead of just the slash marks and then, and then going with five over, all right? So what we're going to do first is we're going to take a couple of examples. You can tell how awesome I draw on these two examples, right? They look awesome, don't they? And we're going to figure out what number it represents. Okay, so the cool thing about their system is that turning them back and forth in between our numbers and theirs is pretty easy. You're just counting and you're saying what the number represents. So if I've got the pointing finger, how much is that pointing finger worth? 10,000. So let me write these down just so everybody's on the same page. You don't have to show this work. You can go straight to the answer. I'm okay with that. What about the two flowers? What, do you, what is the two flowers going to be worth? That's 2,000. What are my uh, two heel bones worth? They're ten apiece, so this is twenty. And then my three strokes or my three um, staffs are three. All right. So if I look at these and I combine all this together, what number is this? Twelve thousand twenty-three. Easy enough. It's not too bad, right? Okay. Like again, I'm not really going to like the next slide where it's just write down something like ten times or something nine times, but. But this is the idea, all right? Um, so how about this next one? How about we've got my three fish? How much are my fish worth? 100,000. So how much is this one worth? This is 300,000. Oops. I've got three uh, scrolls. A scroll is worth 100, so this is worth 300. Um, to 
depending on what text you're using, you'll sometimes see that once they get past three of something, they'll stack them on top of each other. I really don't care. Stack them, don't stack them. I've seen it both ways in different textbooks. So, uh, But they, they will stack them sometimes in your book or in my math lab. What's a heel bone worth? Ten. So these four of them are worth forty. And then I have the two strokes or staffs at the end, and that's worth two. So putting all this together, and again, you can jump to the putting it all together if you want. That's fine. What number is this? Right, 300,342. 342. All right, we will do one more today. We're going to take one of our numbers, actually two of our numbers, and we're going to turn it into their number system. So I see that I have 23,145. How do I get the two in that ten thousandths place? Two pointing fingers, that's right. Promised I didn't draw well. I'm going to make good on that promise. How about the three? Three flowers. Three flowers. Just for the record, I do draw a little bit better when it's not on an iPad, but not a lot better. <laughs> How about the one? What is that? It's a scroll. So one scroll. What's the four? Four heels. I'll stack mine. Do it, don't, doesn't matter, but there's four heels. And then five what? Five staffs. How about the number 51,300? What's that going to be? Five pointing fingers. And then what? One flower. Uh huh. And three scrolls. Okay, so as evidently, you know, the, the inherent problem in their system is that if you had something that was a nine in any of these locations, you'd have to write nine of them out. Nine strokes. I can do that. That's no big deal. Nine flowers, I'm not too keen on that kind of stuff. Okay? Sound good? All right.